Hello and welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. My name is Martin Turner and today we're going to look at something which I call image logic. Now image logic is just a word I'm using to talk about how we put together the different image editing and gradient and transparency features which are new in Quark Express 2017. Now we're all used in a photo editing application to be able to click on a picture, apply a style to it and get something which looks quite polished, however it also looks very pre-packaged. And if we want to get away from the kind of coldness and, and general rubbishness of over digital documents, we've got to build these things up from the ground up. Let's go to the screen. And uh, here I've got a, a typical problem which you often face in doing, especially for the web. You've got a, 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 an iconic kind of image, some, somebody wants that in there, um, which is going to express something for them. Uh, and um, it's just not very interesting. Well, one of the most obvious things you can do with it is do a mirror effect underneath. So a mirror on black glass, uh, and you can do that in the image editing application, but then it would not necessarily be appropriate for your layout, uh, and also you'd have to save the file separately. Well, I've, I've just cheated a little bit. I've, I've done this before. I'm, I'm, I'm going to unhide suppressed. And what I've done is I've created these in Quark Express. Now, how do I do this? Well, let's just get rid of that picture first. So what I've got here uh, is uh, a black gradient going from uh, over here, if we look at it, uh, I've got 100% black through to 70% black. Uh, and on top of that, uh, in the color, so I'm not using image editing at all at the moment, for the, for the picture, well, let's, let's just paste that picture back in, um, put that in there. I'm going to first off turn it upside down. So I'm just going to use uh, the flip vertical here, because otherwise it's not going to work at all. And now I'm going to make that uh, multiply. So uh, multiply, of course, uh, takes, uh, it multiplies the two values together. And so it will always be darker. Now, even though that image uh, does not actually uh, fill the entire area, um, nonetheless, uh, I don't want to do that, uh, nonetheless, it, it still has that kind of black mirrored effect. Uh, and again, let's do this again. So delete that image. In fact, delete the entire thing. Uh, I'm going to come down here uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, create that gradient. So let's flip the image first. Let's turn it on to multiply. And now we just want to make an axial gradient uh, and it's going to go from uh, black 70% uh, to, uh, we'll give that, I think, uh, 90 degrees, will we? Uh, and actually it's the image that should be on multiply, not the gradient. So we'll turn that to normal. Uh, black 70% through to black 100%. Actually, I want to flip that over uh, and there you have it. That's really easy to do. I've done the same one here. Uh, you can see that as well. And then over here, we can do the same thing uh, on white. Uh, so in this case, instead of doing multiply, uh, I'm now uh, with the screening. I'm doing overlay. So I actually once bizarrely bought a little app that would make these mirror things. I was so impressed with it. It's quite old hat now, but you do get asked to do it. And really just with that gradient underneath, uh, so on the background here, uh, and the, the relevant overlay, you get this effect. Let's look at another one. So here's me, and imagine that I, I want to uh, iconize myself. Well, you've probably tried this uh, with Posterize, uh, but Posterize gives you usually an impression that's not quite right. If you, if you want to get that, that kind of political poster effect, it really doesn't work. Well, the trick here is to add in brightness and contrast. So look at that. So um, if you're doing Posterize, the temptation is to say, well, okay, three is no good. So you've got different levels of post tries down here. So I'll, I'll up the levels until I get something. But of course, what you eventually get for it to be nice enough to look at is just um, the uh, 
the picture as it stands and you really can't tell the difference. So we go back down to three levels and I'm going to turn brightness and contrast on and you can just play with that uh, until you get uh, the effect you're looking for. And so you've kind of uh, posterized yourself, or I've posterized myself, and I can keep playing with it. So using posterize rarely produces the result you want, but posterize modified by brightness and contrast almost certainly uh, will do that. Well, okay, let's try another one. Suppose I want to really cartoonize something. So again, you can, you can buy a, an app which will do this, but over here, I've got the, uh, the apple and the lemon and the, I think that's a grapefruit. No, I think it's perhaps a melon. Uh, and, and I've just cartoonized them. Well, how have I done that? Very, very simple. So all I've got here is I've taken the image, I've took it, taken it twice. And the first time I've blurred it by 19 pixels using Gaussian blur. So let's turn that off uh, and uh, the regular image. And now we're going to turn it back on again. And there's the blurred version. Then on top of that, so I've just dragged, in fact, I'm gonna delete that uh, right now. Uh, I've just dragged that uh, down there and we're going to delete the Gaussian blur. We're going to uh, put in the effect posterize uh, and we're gonna put in the effect find edges. And uh, in fact, I wanna move that one down. So I'm gonna click on there. And again, like that, it doesn't really look cartoonized, it just looks kind of weird. But if I now put this over here and uh, we'll try multiply, that's great. We have instantly our cartoon effect. Now you might say well, the, the, the melon doesn't look so great and not all images are suitable for that. But uh, a lot of these image effects are built up very simply by just applying one or two effects. And the difference between doing this and using a bespoke plugin uh, in an image editing application. One is cost, you haven't got to buy it, but two is you get exactly what you want. It will no longer look like it's been produced by clicking a button on a Cartoonit plugin or clicking a button on a mirror plugin or, or clicking a button on an iconized plugin. Well, let's do something a little bit more complicated. So um, I'm gonna come up to here and I've got a picture which I, I, uh, I shot to be used in silhouette. Um, and uh, you can silhouette this quite nicely. Uh, we could just go here and uh, even actually put threshold on it. Uh, and uh, if used in the right way, you get something which could be quite nice, maybe not. Um, we could also uh, silhouette that by uh, desaturating uh, and then dealing with the background in some way. But imagine that I've got this image and uh, well, somebody else has shot it, and now I want to reuse it, and I want to get the colors back in. Well, um, of course I can go to uh, Affinity Photo or Photoshop or one of those other applications, and I probably would do. But I want to show you how I can achieve this only using Quark Express's features. So I'm not saying you would do it this way, I'm saying that uh, this is a good way to learn what we're doing. So, um, what I've done is I've copied the uh, copied the document, uh, not the document, the picture three times or twice. And the first thing I've copied it with, uh, I just dragged it across and I've applied, uh, so let me turn those effects off. Uh, and I put it as screen, as you can see over here. So turn that off. So it's, it's just that same image, uh, no difference there. And I'm gonna put it into screen. And now what I'm trying to do is to create a mask uh, in Quark Express. So let me turn those off. And the first thing I'm gonna do is do threshold. And what threshold is doing for me is it is making everything black or white, a very essential tool in any kind of Quark Express marking, uh, masking. So very simple, uh, turn that off, uh, threshold, uh, and just put that to the top. And I've just got that straight at 128. Now I'm going to apply to that a Gaussian blur and, and just see for a second, back to normal, it's just black and white. In fact, we'll leave it on normal for a second. And now I'm going to apply Gaussian blur. And the reason I do this is because transitions are rarely going to be sharp. So although I want to mask out, I don't want to mask out too obviously. And finally, I'm going to invert it. 
So back to that, and it was on, on screen, wasn't it? So back to screen. And what you see now is I've got the sky is not really changed. Look at that. I'm going to move that across. Um, but the black area, which is what I want to bring the colors back into, uh, has uh, improved. Well, it should just become white. Now, the final element of this, which again, I've copied it again, is I've got a, uh, a version of this. And it's on dark and white now. Just put it back to normal. Where with gamma correction, so let's, let's turn these off for a second. Um, that's just the same document. And I've applied gamma correction. I've applied that all the way. So on basically zero, it's the same. As you go up, it gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Uh, and so my pictures come back in. I've, I've now got all the detail of the, uh, the corn, but the color's gone weird. So what I'm doing now is just with selective color, so that's from uh, over here, selective color. I've gone to the neutral colors, so you can do different, different kinds of colors here. And I've, I've increased the magenta. You can see what happens if I take that back up again. Increased it to seven, and I've taken the yellow to 14. Um, and uh, I haven't done anything to the black, haven't done anything to the white, haven't done anything even, well, actually I did for the yellow, I increased on the yellow, the yellow to 48 and the magenta to 12. Let's look at that again. So what it's done is it's resaturated. Now, what did I say that was gonna be on? Was that uh, screen overlay? Let's come back in here and um, let's now move that uh, onto here. Uh, it's not gonna be overlay. Let's just screen that for a second. Obviously not screen, multiply. Yes, it's multiply I wanted. So um, what I've now got here is I've masked out the darkened area and reversed that, so making it white. And I'm now multiplying onto it the corrected image. Now let's just take that off multiply. You'll see that the, the sky is totally whited out. So that's, that's no good to me at all. What I want is basically the sky from here and the corn from here. So by using multiply, multiply will always make things darker. So it's keeping the sky pretty much the same, very slightly different there. Uh, and it's enabling me to uh, have a masked out version here. Now you might say, well, that's a hideously complicated way to do something uh, which is very simply done uh, in HDR. Uh, you've got an HDR application, we'll do that straight away. But the point I'm trying to make is that if you start using, start thinking uh, in this way, then uh, by using threshold uh, and adding to it uh, Gaussian blur, which just softens a little bit, and then using invert, uh, I've managed to turn an image into a mask of that image. Then by screening it onto the image, I only keep the brightest areas. So a screen is like shining two projectors together onto one spot so that whatever is bright stays bright um, and brightens whatever is dark. And then by multiplying onto that, uh, an image which is corrected for the dark area, uh, but overcorrected, of course, for the light area, I get a result uh, which is really rather better than what I was looking for. So that's just an example of how to use uh, image logic. Uh, three or four things there. So that one was quite complicated. You might want to watch this again, see what I did there. But the uh, example with the mirror look is really the simplest thing in the world. It's just uh, a transparency blend mode, uh, appropriate for whether it's a dark background or a light background, and a gradient. Uh, for my posterization, all I'm doing is I'm combining uh, brightness and contrast with posterize. So you may have played with posterize and thought this, this effect isn't very really good. Uh, and again, uh, using uh, this time find edges with posterize multiplied onto another copy, a slightly more complicated effect. We've achieved something which we couldn't possibly have achieved on its own. There's far more that you can do 
uh, putting image effects together. And uh, of course, it's not difficult to build up your own library of them. But what I've been learning since Quark Express 2017 came out is that if you develop these things from the ground up, once you've got your mind around doing them, they really go very quickly indeed. And the result is utterly different from pre-packaged uh, effects coming out of Photoshop styles or out of particular plugins. They all look like, like, like each other. And after a while, people look at your documents and say, Photoshopped. And it's, it's really becoming a mark of low quality. Uh, if you want to have it look like art rather than just like uh, playing around as a sort of hobbyist, then starting from the ground up and, and Quark's inbuilt effects are really very good for this is the way to go. The other side of this is that, as I said before, you should be using image editing when it's appropriate for the editing to take place at the layout stage. And many of these things are much better done in the layout than done before. Otherwise, you end up saving many different versions of the same file, but also you can end up with things which have been produced for different documents which just don't go together. When you keep everything in the final layout in Quark Express, then you're almost certain to have a document which looks like it hangs together. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And in the meantime, happy quarking. I'm <laughs> sorry.